something a bit different that we're doing this week is because uh, we've actually kind of run out of uh, result news for the weekend. But um, that's all right. We will fill up the rest of the show with, uh, well, partly, with uh, F1 Silly Season. Now, for those of you don't, who don't know what Silly Season means, you probably just think I'm talking nonsense. But what it means is the transfer period of uh, drivers moving teams. Um, they call it a Silly Season because it can get a little bit silly with contracts and drivers moving and whatnot. Um, so yeah, let's go through the list. We're going to do the Formula One one first, and then we'll talk about um, MotoGP later. There are some seats that haven't been filled yet in Formula One. The top kind of five are kind of set, except for the second seat at Mercedes. So I guess we may as well start there. Look, I think it's really, really uh, fascinating this season. Um, you know, Mercedes, I don't think they've given up on the idea of signing Max Verstappen and, you know, the car performing really, really well. It's Look, I know it sounds crazy, but crazier things have happened. And, you know, I think there is a lot more tension at Red Bull than they make it out to be. Uh, I think the Perez situation is really, really interesting. But uh, look, one thing that we do know for sure is that this Perez contract is not signed, not sealed good. and delivered. You know, there are clauses in it and it could be as early as middle of the season that they might get rid of him. Well, I've written down the list in on paper, and I wrote 2026 question mark. Yes. Because he's the only driver that hasn't really shown that he's worthy of that seat. Exactly. Compared to everyone else who's signed and, you know, is all good to go for the, their contract. So let's go with Red Bull. Um, all right. What are your thoughts? Well, Perez needs to go. Definitely. The sooner the better. <laughs> okay. Well, he, he got, he's been outscored by Nico Hulkenberg in a half. Yeah, the last two races. It, it's look, it's just simply not good enough. It's just, I think he's finished in the points one out of the last six, seven races. The best, that's not good at all. The best teammate to a, a championship winning car was Bottas. You know, like how he performed, constantly on the podium. Yeah, not too far away from the teammate. Yes, you know the, you know, the bridesmaid, never the bride, yeah. Yeah, but exactly. within reach. I mean, we're yeah, talking, he could have beaten we're, him. We're talking here about uh, a driver that is um, underperforming, you know, the sister team. It's literally, yeah, he came <laughs> out of the four Red Bull cars. He was last. It's it's so bad. It's so bad. So definitely, I do believe that the silly season, that seat um, could either go to Liam Lawson or Daniel Ricciardo. What are your thoughts? I think it'd be easier if they just put Liam in. But are they going to kick Perez out of F1 full stop is the question mark. Look, there have been recent rumors um, suggesting that uh, they could kick him out altogether, put Liam um, at RB and put Daniel Ricciardo. Daniel yeah. Ricciardo, from a marketing point of view, is a phenomenon. You know, but that still kicks out Perez. Yeah. Out yeah, of yeah. F1 full stop. Is that kick what, him out. Is that what's going to happen? I hope so. Well, yeah. I mean, him, Ocon, Stroll. I mean, you know, form how much better would the Formula 1 be without these people? True, and Perez, let's be honest, only saved his career by a race in Abu uh, Bahrain all those years ago. Yes. With that one victory for Racing Point. So, okay. So that's, you know, Red Bull. I mean, Max Verstappen to Mercedes is definitely silly, 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 silly season talk, but never say never. Yeah, you never but say never. Money talks. Exactly. Uh, Mercedes, what are your thoughts? <sighs> Honestly, it's all the way we're going to describe silly season is Carlos Sainz. Yes, he is silly season. Wherever he goes, other drivers can sign other team. Uh, sorry, other teams can sign other drivers. Yes, it's all he's the number one on the driver market. Let's be honest. Has he been reading like books on play hard to get, but he's been reading the wrong ones because he's going to end up with no know. with no seat. I mean, like, how much more can you drag this out? Well, like, the worst, this is, the worst this is, part is three rounds ago, he said, uh, I'm very, either I'm very close to a decision or I want this to be over and done with. Yes. And he's still going. Yeah. Like a month later. And he does know that it takes time, you know, to do the seat fitting and, you know, like, does he want to rock up at round one and just <laughs> randomly find a seat? I don't it, know, man, but... But look, um, at, he's at, running out of options. At Mercedes, realistically, we have the Carlos Sainz option, the mm. Kimi Antonelli option, and yeah. then, I mean, look, is there anybody else left? Well, a, a, couple months, a couple months ago, I would have said Alex Elbon, but that's gone. That's gone. 
So really, it's they have a guest signed. Could it be? Could it be Bottas again? No, I think they ruled that out. Okay, good. Because Bottas has now been linked to Williams. So is everybody else. Well, yeah, I mean everybody. Everybody's <laughs> going to Williams, um, and everybody's getting a, a McLaren IndyCar drive. You know, like yeah, <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my emails are blowing oh. up. But anyways, so Mercedes, <laughs> I think it's uh, Carlos Sainz or Kimi Antonelli. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was George Russell. And I got Kimi Antonelli as my teammate Whoa. in his first year in F1. I'd be pissed because of that. he did three or four seasons at Williams when Mercedes were the dominant car, and he would have challenged. George a... was meant to be what Kimi is. Yeah. George was the boy, the Mercedes boy. And, yeah, he took now, him three years to get a shot. Now, I have heard that Toto was super, super impressed with Kimi Antonelli's drive in he the wet. test, didn't he? No, but he did a, he he won by oh, eight yeah, seconds yeah, yeah. in the wet. Yeah, so it was on equal yeah. machinery, and and again that sparked the interest. But I think Mercedes do know who's going there. I mean, could Alonso go there and just surprise everybody? I don't know. Lawrence Stroll's money is pretty his wallet's pretty big. All right, so let's move on. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna say Kimi. So Ferrari Ferrari's Kimi. locked in. I mean, that's done. Thank God. That's you know not, nothing's happening there. Although the Adrian Newey factor. Oh, yes. Where, where is he going? Well, he's leaving Red Bull, and everyone thought, cool, he's going to Ferrari. Turns out, no. Maybe not. But Turns maybe, out, maybe but, not. But maybe, yes. I think that what they're saying about Aston Martin or McLaren is the fact that he doesn't have to leave the UK. Whereas True. if he goes to Ferrari, he has to move to Italy. And learn a language. But come on, it's Italy. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, mean, would, I would want to work for Ferrari if I had the opportunity. But, like I said, money talks. Yes. And Lawrence Stroll's wallet is very big. Yes. Um, so I actually think he's going to go to Aston Martin, just like um Sebastian Vettel did. Look, I think the challenge. And I of, think Sebastian Vettel may have said something. Who knows? Well, look, I think the challenge of um getting a team that is outside of the top three to get them into oh, yeah. you know winning ways. I mean, we've seen what he's done with the hypercar that he's built. Um, the man is a freak. Yeah, when it comes 100%. to building Crazy. building cars. So. Very, very interesting times indeed. So, yeah, Ferrari sorted, Mercedes, Kimi Antonelli, uh, Kimi Antonelli, Carlos Sainz, or somehow Alonso just <laughs> I think in no there. Idea. Um, Aston Martin, I mean, look, that that's going to be wrapped up, surely, like, right? Lance Stroll and what Fernando. Already said, already it's said, done, um, right? Stroll signed uh, a multi year deal, and so is Alonso until 2026. Now, Haas. Well, oh, uh, by the way, McLaren's already sort as well. Oh, yeah, of course. Norris and PSG uh, until a twenty twenty six at least. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, Haas. Yeah, the Oli Berman. Yes, good signing. Very good. Like it. Um, the rumors though. Who else? Hearing about the second seat. No, no good. idea. Well, there's there's rumors about Alcon. Oh boy. There's rumors of. Uh, I mean, surely Kevin is out. Yeah, he can't. I don't. I don't think he stays in. Formula now the in interesting control. thing is this Toyota partnership. Mate, what? that's that, that, that's interesting. Well, you know, Haas has been performing well, this year. Haas they is a good thing. Beat Ferrari this week or yeah. past week. So I don't know. Haas this year, obviously, they uh, changed their team principal. Um, Gunter Steiner pretty much got kicked out. And look, they have been performing well. I think Haas is one of those teams that just because of due to budget, I think they go one season good, one season bad. Go yeah. back to good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you Absolutely. know, they just allocate Look, their funds that way. Next year, they're probably going to be bad because of the new regulations. They've got to spend more, more money. Well, yeah. I mean, if I was them, I would go towards 2026 rules and yeah, I think give myself, the best, give myself the best budget for that. Um, RB. Well, that's oh, another geez. interesting, very, very interesting topic. I mean, I mean, you got Daniel, Liam Lawson. you got five drivers for four seats. Yeah, pretty much. That's the problem. That's, you know, you've got Bottas, you've got Ocon, you've got, there's a lot of people. I mean, you know, even Logan Sargent thinks he but, can get a seat, you know. I, I think, though, um, for RB, it's, it's going to definitely be one of their drivers. Either Liam Lawson or Daniel Ricciardo stays there. Yes. I think that's confirmed. Yeah. Whether or not which one's in which. Did you see when Paris crashed out of um, Q1 what the cameraman did? No. Okay, so first day... <laughs> First, they had the camera on Christian Horner. Nice. And he looked disgusted. Sure. And then for a brief second, they switched to Daniel Ricciardo's poster of him smiling. Oh. 
<laughs> I did not oh, see that, but I'm gonna I, have to go look oh, again. Oh, you're gonna have to go check it out. It is that's funny. It's it's brilliant. That's great. It's brilliant. So Williams now, um, <laughs> Williams well, again. Let's just say the next three teams are all in contention for science. Yes, I think Williams stake, which is Audi really. Um, Alpine. Al, I mean, look, it's uh, I don't know. I think, you know, we could talk about the silly season, you know. I don't think it's just a segment that we're going to do once off. I think we're yeah, going to be doing true. this on a weekly basis because on a weekly basis, the news is changing about all these teams. Look, I think Paris is going to go to China F4. Like, <laughs> I think that's where that's where he's going to end oh, up. Dear. And, you know, I think Pierre Gasly, um, I think that's a good signing for them, uh, for Alpine. Um, Nico was a great signing for Audi, and I think Audi are going to really, really enjoy working with him. And he's definitely outperformed his teammate. He's driving brilliantly. You know, people were complaining about his height, and you know, look at him. You know, his uh, his driving is phenomenal at the moment. So, I guess to be continued. Yeah, sure. I I think the Williams say I definitely think it actually could be even Ricardo. True. If if he gets mishandled at Red Bull RB, whatever you want to call it, then look, I think they'll be happy to have him. And I, as a Ricardo fan, I wouldn't be too bummed about it either. I think Ricardo has done enough to stay. True, but I think um, I think he's done enough. Yeah, I agree. But um, yeah, like like you said, let's see what happens. Now to round off the silly season, I just want to quickly touch on this, right? Rolex. Which for a long time has been, you know, like it, it was a great partnership between Rolex and Formula One. Yep. But that looks like also silly season has hit the sponsorship side of F1 because the $50 million deal per year for Rolex to be the timekeeper of Formula One looks like that's going to be coming to an end as well. And I'll tell you why. Viewership of Formula One since that contract got signed 10 years ago has tripled yeah, motorsport netflix yes because yeah. motorsport has never ever been more popular now who's going to take over well the contract i mean this is all speculations for now but the new deal is reportedly worth 150 million dollars annually and it's going to go i know wow i know so I know. it's jumped up by three well, three yeah, times. three times the views, three times the money. And it's going to go to sure. LVMH. Now, who is LVMH? Well, it is a group of companies. And so most likely the brand that you're going to see on Formula One from next year will be yep. the Tag, Tag Heuer. Tag Heuer. And it's, uh, again, another phenomenal brand to be associated with uh, Formula One. But you know what? I'm going to miss Rolex. Yeah, so there's it's not going to be the same. There's huge green posters that are going to be hard to not or well, hard to miss, I guess. Yeah. And so, I think um, it's um but look, yeah. the the new deal 150 million hard for Formula 1 to reject uh, such uh, such an increase. So um, does that does that mean that every motorsport category is going to somehow have to be sponsored by a watch? <laughs> I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure. Motor GPS, Tiso, I think. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, I, I think it's really, really fascinating. Even but I, I think um, the key takeaway for our listeners is that uh, motorsport has never been this popular. And I think it's a phenomenal across uh, if you're a driver, if you're a team, if you're a, a, a company looking to get exposure to this market, it's never been more popular. But to finish off the silly season, I'm going to quickly wrap it up this week with the MotoGP silly season. Uh, Peko Bagnaia and Marc Marquez are signed, sealed, and delivered for Ducati. That's going to be a very, very strong partnership. KTM will just simply have four factory bikes. They're all going to be identical with Brad Binder, Pedro Costa, Maverick Vinales, and Enya Bastianini. I think that's a phenomenal squad. Aprilia Racing, the factory team, will have Jorge Martin and Marco Bezzecchi. That'll be good too. I think Bezzecchi will surprise, and I think he'll do really, really well. And Jorge Martin, well, I think he's just uh, got a vendetta for Ducati, so that's going to be motivation enough to to do well. Sure. Yamaha have, of course, their poster boy, Fabio Quattararo. Mm -hmm. That's signed, but the second factory seat is up for grabs, and it's not guaranteed that it will go to Rins. So no, that, that's going to be yeah. very, very interesting. Repsol Honda have Luca Marini signed and sealed for the 2025 season. And looks like uh, um, Joan Mir will 
sign again. Okay. So it looks like that that sign is going to be unchanged. Sure. Sure. LCR Honda have Johan Zarco. That's a great choice for them. Yep. However, it looks like Taki is not going to be renewed. And so they're looking ah. to bring a Moto2 Japanese star. Okay. So Ayagura looks like we'll be taking over that seat. Uh, Grassini Ducati have Alex Marquez. Yep. And most likely, they'll have um, uh, Falmiga from Moto2, which okay. is a signed Ducati rider. That, at the moment, looks like you know the likely scenario. Sure. Where it gets really, really fascinating is that Trackhouse Aprilia, VR46, uh, Pramac Yamaha have not signed a single rider yet. That is weird. And I think that's really, really interesting. So I think Trackhouse, Aprilia, um, Joe Roberts, of course, being American, is, you know, oh, yeah. on the hot seat there. Um, I think they will sign Raul back. It's hard to replace those two because Miguel and Raul has been pretty good this year. Well, like Miguel, Miguel has been, uh, um, up there, there are talks about Yamaha. Oh, okay. Yeah, either Pramac sure, Yamaha or sure. actual factory Yamaha. Uh, VR46 uh, looks like it will be Morbidelli and um, uh, Fabio. Okay. Uh, Digital Antonio. Sure. Uh, but Pramac Yamaha is completely open. You know, they're open to all ideas. You know, there's even been talks about Andre Iannone. Um, They do want an experienced rider and a new rider. That's that's their preference at the okay, moment. That's fine. But the silly season of MotoGP will continue, and there's lots and lots and lots of things to discuss. I love the silly season. I love drivers and riders pushing to the limits, you know, to try and get a new contract in Moto2, in MotoGP, in F1, you know, and F2, of course, you know, because F2 is the breeding yes. ground of Formula One. So let us know in the comments if you do enjoy silly season, if we want this to become a permanent segment on the show we need your feedback but apart from that guys i hope you enjoyed uh, today this week's episode of silly season